I'm at JD's shop for this video, and he's working on a liquid nitrogen header. It's two inch Schedule 10 stainless steel, a couple of end caps, a few OLEDs. So that lets us talk about things like purge, fitting up, the, the setup he uses for sanitary type wells, even though this really isn't to sanitary code, no food product running through it. Still good to talk about this kind of thing. We're still going to purge it. We'll talk a little bit about this strong back. It's just a jewel clamp made by Rigid. In this case, not used for fitting, but just for, for a strong back to keep the thing from bowing. So we're just about ready to get a tack on the first end cap. We're going to have to let the purge run for a few minutes first. Anytime you're making a full penetration weld, like on these end caps, you want to have a purge on the back side. It welds so much better, produces such, such a better weld with a smooth surface instead of a granulated sugared surface on the back side. So about 10 CFH is all it's going to take. We'll let that run about five minutes before we get the first tack on there. When you purge something, you need a vent. You need a place for the air to go to get displaced. And the vent needs to be at the very uppermost, the topmost point of the part because argon's heavier than air and it displaces the atmosphere out of the part and pushes it out the top. While we're tacking this, there's a gap, a, a very small gap in this joint. It'll pretty much close up by the time we get four tacks on it. But right now, that's serving as the vent. But as we close the ends up, we're going to have to make sure to have a vent cut in the tape somewhere so that pressure doesn't build up and blow out the weld, which I have done before. Just You just forget to, to cut a, a vent or forget to place a big enough vent or have your argon flowing way too high. That's a topic for a, another video, I guess, the flow rates. So what I like to do is cut either an X or a T instead of just poke holes. And so that just will kind of stay like that. It'll hold the argon in. It just, just enough will escape. And then as it closes up, that'll just open up as it needs to, and you won't build pressure. So the first pass, this is Schedule 10, 2-inch Schedule 10. It has some slight bevels on it with a little, about a 1 16th land, and it's pretty much just slammed up because we can rotate this thing. Running at about 65 to 70 amps here, just going along at a slow enough rate to fully penetrate where we have a nice purge on the back side. And you can see it sinking just a little bit. So when we get finished with this weld, it'll be slightly below flush, and we'll do a second pass on it because two things are important about this job. To maintain the, the stainless properties of this stainless steel so it doesn't rust or corrode, and then also make sure there's no leaks. So two passes on these butt welds will ensure that nothing leaks. We could have done this job walking the cup, but as, as uh, small as these little bevels are, it would have been kind of like rocking the cup on the root. It just seemed easier to put a TIG finger on, prop right there, just, maybe. pivot the wrist, and it's, it's just made for a job like this because your hand doesn't get hot, you're nice and steady, and it just uh, doesn't hang up because that stainless is nice and smooth. Just a good way to do this job. Now, I like walking the cup as much as anybody. It's a great technique and produces great results, moves you along super consistently. But you just can't, on every single job, you just can't walk the cup. And it's, it's just nice to have a prop in your pocket to be able to hold steady on something that's getting pretty hot. And while the first pass, the root pass, was done with no filler, even though JD was holding a filler wire in his hand just in case. Some, sometimes it's good to have a, a wire in your hand just in case something opens up on you. But the first pass was done with no filler. This pass is done using a 332 ER308L filler wire just leaving it in the puddle. They call that lay wire. And while it's while it's still good and hot, it'll brush off nice and clean with a stainless steel yeah. wire brush. Mm -hmm. When JD drilled the holes for the OLETs, he okay. made a witness mark with a center punch that, that lines them all up. So using this little center finder tool here with the level on it, we'll get all the holes at top dead center. A quick little acetone wipe to get any tape residue or anything like that off always helps. Wiping the filler rod always helps too. Cleaner the better. This is a pretty good fit, so just getting some real quick small fusion tacks, leaving that nipple on there. And of course they pull, stainless steel pulls a lot. This is a two axis torpedo level and it's pretty handy for stuff like this because you don't have to you know constantly move it around. Alright, once once that's done you get a couple more tacks on it and do the same thing on the other two. Just small tacks, not going to take much. Sometimes they require filler, sometimes they don't. Just depends if you have a little gap or not. 
there are three OLEDs on this thing and two of them are really close to the pipe caps and they won't show any distortion to the naked eye but this middle one don't want it to have a distinct noticeable bow in it so we're locking it down with this uh, jewel clamp and using it as a strong back and on these we're just doing a nice good size pass with uh, 332 lay wire that's a jazzy 10 furic cup by the way if you're wondering doing a pretty dang good job here I forgot how fun these little jobs like this could be on stainless but I also forgot how long it's been since I've done it so a little out of practice starting to get my hand back in it a little bit this one we're gonna we're gonna turn like a turntable we're gonna spin it in the tripod vise <laughs> You might have noticed earlier on the bare copper wire that I had looped around the, the stainless pipe. That's just because if you ground the tripod vise, you'll pick up arc marks. And, you know, with all the little strands of copper, with all the little contact points touching that stainless steel all at once, it works great for a rotary ground clamp. And who doesn't have an extra, you know, five or six feet of, of old lead or old ground clamp or stinger laying around? So that's all we did is just strip the insulation off an old ground clamp. And uh, then we got a nice poor man's rotary ground there. Okay, one last OLED to tack up here in the in the end of the end cap. So we'll make sure we got that running true with the rest of the run, holding the level on the nipple there. And if we get a few tacks on that, we'll roll it out just like we did the last weld. Here's a quick look at that whole ground situation here again. Just twist it up, hang a ground clamp on it. Make sure to have plenty of strands there to get a ground on and you're good to go. I mentioned walking the cup a little bit earlier. So I, I did a video a good while back about that. And here's some short clips just to review walking the cup. It's like rolling a 55 gallon drum across a shop floor. You're making these little figure eights. And if you think in your mind's eye about rolling a drum across, across a floor, it makes it, it makes it kind of fall into place for you. But there are times when you just plain can't walk the cup just don't have access, don't have room to walk the cup around like that, in which case a TIG finger can really, really help by giving you a nice steady prop. And you can prop really close to a weld without your fingers screaming. This is my product and I'm very proud of it. Also very proud to say it is 100% sourced and manufactured and packaged in the USA by friends and family. If you'd like to try one out, head over to weldmonger.com, put one in the cart, you won't regret it.